This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. Our website is ccc.qbook.tv, where you can find other audio and video episodes with photos, links, and information related to today's conversation. Subscribe to leave comments and access research episodes with applied topics and research reports. Welcome back to Talk of Asian Marketing, and today we're going to fly back to Singapore, and we're going to take a look at some consumer behavior. With me today is Jane Lu from Zhongxin University in Taiwan Marketing Department. Hi, everybody. I'm back again. And I'm Clyde Warden from also Zhongxin University's Marketing Department、mm-hmm. and Sterling University's Institute for Retail Studies. So, what are we looking at today? We are looking at the Gui, very traditional rice cakes.、Um, Made of、uh, different types of rice, a long grain, short grain, sweet rice, and then it it、uh, has this、uh, very traditional flavor, and then it is used、uh, for breakfast or for just、uh, the religious reasons, and then the old generation usually eat it、uh, on a regular basis, but for the young young generation, it takes a while for them to get used to the flavor of it. Well, I have to say that.、Um At the beginning of the video, they show it in its traditional context, which is at the altar of the family's、um, family altar inside their temple room.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, for anyone who didn't know, I think we've mentioned this before. You know, you can drive your car on the highway in Taiwan at night. Also in Hong Kong, in some places, but Hong Kong is a little bit different. It's so packed, and parts of China, and you can see inside these rooms red lights everywhere.、Mm-hmm. You can see these buildings with you know hundreds of people and there's red lights and what are these? These are temple rooms、mm-hmm. where people keep their family altar and you have your family tablets and your family lineage and these、mm-hmm. kinds of things. It is a religious thing, and this way is a food that's used in the bye bye ceremony. It is.、Um, it's very traditional, and this is the must be for this bye bye stuff. And, and then you、yeah. have to have it.、Uh, and then sometimes we just eat it afterwards.、Uh, sometimes we use it、uh, for certain purposes and use different type of them. And then we eat it、uh, because we we could、um, get this、uh, good fortune out of it. We get、uh, good health out of it.、Uh, we feel comfortable eating afterwards to get that the power and energy. Yeah, so that's the kind of traditional ideas behind it. Like lots of Chinese、um, Taoism ideas, you know, inanimate objects have power and things like this. So that all sounds very complicated and blah blah blah. But when we get down to it, the video today is about going to breakfast,、yes. and this way is something people eat, and it's not in its religious context necessarily. When you do your bye bye in your religious context, that food like chicken, pork, fish. And Gui, you do eat it. Nobody wastes it. No. But in this case, we're at a restaurant, a breakfast shop, and it has nothing to do with religion. No. People are just eating. We just like it. <laughs> I love it. I have to say, I love it. I love this stuff. I love Gui. And whenever my wife gets a chance, we buy it. You can get it usually in morning markets, fresh yes, markets,、sure. and temples sell it. Yes. And of course, because markets are often next to temples,、mm-hmm. you, you can get it right there anyway.、Mm-hmm. Um, what's it made out of? Just so our viewers can get an idea. Well, sometimes it's made of rice, but we have different rice, and so we use an,、um, kind of a long grain for this、uh, reddish white、um, rice cakes,、uh, and then you can cut them into pieces. Sometimes we put、uh, like onions in there.、Mm-hmm. Sometimes we put some shrimp or、uh, fried pork in there. It comes out to be like a really dense. Kind、yeah,、of. it's a dance. You can cut it and then and,、yeah. and then fry it, and then it can be used for、um, breakfast or for any of the. It's really、food. hard for me to think of a Western、uh, food that's similar. I think it's something like a sourdough bread that's really thick, or farmer's bread, you know, that's really doughy. But this is not dough. But this is not chewy. It's not chewy. No. But it's very dense. Yes.、Yeah, and very you dense. slice it up, and you can fry it. My mother-in-law sometimes she'll cook it by. Dipping it in eggs,、mm-hmm. egg yolk, and then frying it.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's take a look at the video. I think the video is at a very typical shop. It's in Singapore, yeah, but it if、is. I didn't say it's in Singapore, I don't think you could guess. No, 
I think it could it could be in Hong Kong, it could yeah. be in Taiwan, it could be in southern China. Yes, right? for sure. So take a look at our breakfast show, a whole other show. We talk about breakfast, but this is an up close breakfast show specifically about people eating white. Go ahead, enjoy. Since young, we are being exposed to the traditional gui. Throughout our childhood, we are being conditioned towards the gui and it becomes part of our lifestyle. This culture will be passed on. Let us show you. Now, 
the young adult is able to influence others. become his lifestyle product. Even when he start working, he continue to purchase and consume it. This culture has been passed down to our next generation. This cycle continues. What could trigger the thought of religious ceremony? Do you feel like you want to try some? You feel like there are too many varieties to choose from? Like those little kids can pick up um, exactly the same, the, the right one for a snack? 
or you want to try the whole plate of uh, the different varieties? How do you think it's fine? Well, I love it all. I think the, the great part about this video is I think the viewers would have a hard time to even know what the, could this possibly taste like. I mean, you know, we don't have 3D, we don't have smell, we don't have taste we can send the viewers. So, you know, there's no way to convey that. But I think the video does a really good job of conveying consumer behavior in the context of transmitting behavior from one generation to the next. That's for sure. That's the traditional food that usually eating in families and now there is uh, the shops uh, outside of um, the families and then people could go there and then buy some varieties and then eat right at the shop. Yeah and I think that's a, it's it's one of the things I always like to emphasize and that is the retail is very local. It is. I love this shot my favorite part of the video I just love it is the shot from underneath the counter <laughs> through the glass out to the shop right and, and they had shot a lot of that, and you could see people moving around. I said, I love that kind of position. I love that local retailing. I love that flavor. I feel it's like a healthier, wholesome, mm -hmm. you know, kind of breakfast. So this kind of shop we've talked about before, I think you could find it in many, many places. But here, what's really special is that transmission, that transmission of behavior from little tiny babies to young kids. And you know, one thing I noticed in the video was we're kind of skipping a generation. It looks to me that a lot of these cases are grandparents taking grandchildren out or maybe on the way to school. Yeah, and then there's uh, one specific uh, view of these uh, teenagers. Uh, they are doing like a group shopping for this kind of stuff. Usually they eat back at home. Now they are on their own and they like to try. They kind of uh, try to share with each other. So it, uh, I think there's some kind of nostalgia. Uh, yes. feeding for them yes. just yeah. to try a little piece and then they feel comfortable, they feel very um, relaxing after eating it and, and then they don't miss their home that much. Yeah, I think that in consumer you know, psychology there's some things that are really strong. Um, if you get exposed to certain tastes and smells when you're very young, when you get older, even though you may skip them for a while, you really feel satisfaction when you come back to that. And this is one thing I think is very important. Marketing students often, you know, learn, read books or learn about our big companies like McDonald's and things like this. But breakfast shops like this actually are bigger market segment than all the McDonald's yeah. put together in Singapore and Taiwan. Now, they're not small, but as we had in the breakfast show before, if you go to McDonald's at breakfast, it's not a crowded place no. in Taiwan or in, in, in Singapore. But these shops are always having really good business. And so... It's overlooked, and that really kind of upsets me a little bit. That's why I love this video. It goes down to this level of something that us who live here, we know this is a big market share. This is the real market here. And now we get to see it, and we get to see how that's transmitted. And those young people, they, they grew up, they saw their parents in the temple room. After the bye-bye was done, it was cut up, and they ate it. And then when they're maybe 13, 14, they don't eat it anymore. But then when they're 16, 17, they go back to it. Yeah, they love to eat it, uh, just to try it occasionally or on, on a regular basis. Uh, they feel like uh, they want to eat it uh, because yeah. uh, they feel satisfied. Yeah, because it, it really links up with some core values. And I think that's the key. That's one thing we always emphasize on this uh, Talk of Asian Marketing show is those core values you miss. Now, just as an ending point, if you were a professor or a business person living in the US or the UK, and you were talking to a Chinese student, you would probably never know about Huey. Because no. even if you asked him what's the most popular food, he had no way to tell you. It's um, very deep buried inside of our heart. And it's a tradition, and then it's not something that uh, you could see in banquets. It's no. really for the no. families, uh, for That's the home point. consumption. That's a good point. So that uh, for foreigners, uh, it's, um, this is uh, too traditional, this is uh, too bizarre for them to understand. How could you be so obsessed with uh, such a, a, a plain food? Yeah, it is very plain in a way, right, right. Yeah, but actually for Chinese people, it's uh, very traditional. We're tightly bound to it. We feel like um, just the... Uh, this is something we like to do, we like to eat, we like to go to that kind of shop to feel that the atmosphere is yeah. so comfortable, it's right. so relaxing. Yeah, it's more than just the food. It's more than just Although the I, food. I like it just for the food too, <laughs> tell you the truth. <laughs> but anyway, that, that's, you know, even if you had a student try to tell you he wouldn't, I'm not even sure what the English name is, not, you wouldn't be able to describe it. And because it's so core value, people just overlook it, they don't think about it. So, 
You know, a great example of a big market segment that's totally overlooked, a food that you've probably never heard of. If you do get a chance to get into Taiwan or Hong Kong or Singapore or southern China, I'm sure you can go ask for some way. Try it. Enjoy. Bye. This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. Our website is ccc.qbook.tv where you can find other audio and video episodes with photos, links, and information related to today's conversation. Subscribe to leave comments and access research episodes with applied topics and research reports.